You better not do the voice on your own tag. This yeah, it better be. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga in the studio with <laughs> It sounded like the music that be playing when somebody called the radio station and need some advice. Uh, yeah. We got the phone lines wide open right now. <laughs> Hit us up. Tell us if you're going to leave your boo for April Fool's Day. We got tickets to the Usher concert coming up at the 3 o'clock hour. Traffic jam with my girl, Moni Love. <laughs> Brought to you by attorney Big Al. <laughs> Make sure you stop by Big Al's Rib Shack and get your taxes done. Legal work. Bobby shop. Pet grooming. Car wash. Titty bar. Titty bar. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you stay tuned. We got some tickets to go see my girl, Lil Mama. She's going to be in New Jersey. We know you don't live in New Jersey, but we're going to give away those tickets to see Lil Mama coming up at the 4 o'clock hour. Make sure you stay tuned. Got my man, Big Frank Steele, going to be coming up with the 6 o'clock track and jam to get you home. I don't know why I'm telling you this. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Waiting on everybody to get up. <laughs> Make this little mama. We giving away those tickets to see Little Mama <laughs> with a new smash hit sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, <Chris>. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> You'll take a radio job, huh? You take a radio job and get up every morning. on the check and the I time. I wanted one. You don't know. Once I, you once you start looking into it, then you didn't know them niggas ain't get paid like that. You get pissed off too fast. I do. You get pissed off too fast. I do. I, do. I feel like if you had a sweet deal where they gave you some money up front and you could kind of lean on the money to keep them going off, yeah. you might be all right. Yeah. But if you just got to work dollar for dollar, you ain't going to make it. <laughs> the money got to be coming in. Yeah, yeah, you don't need love music like that. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> you don't love it? You like this shit, yeah. but you don't love it. No, that ain't your work. passion. You got to be in it. I just want to be someone where I can just talk shit. Yeah, you know, that's, radio. that's, that's, that's my thing. My thing is, even if, get like, if I had to get a they job won't. again, that's probably why I, didn't get I would never get a job where I can only make money at work. You get what I'm saying? Like, if I got a job, it'd have to be some shit that I got good at that I can do, like, on my off day. When you want to do it. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'd be the cable man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Some shit like that. Like, yeah. if you need me to come through and turn that shit back on, yeah, yeah I need something I can hustle with <laughs> you outside. Ain't no, you ain't on nobody's man. schedule. Don't never give me no guy. All the money I'm going to make it going to come from y'all, that's for hell. No. What the worst job you ever had? The worst job I ever had, let me think. Because I, I don't know. Maybe a dishwasher because I don't like being wet. <laughs> No, I still got, my foot still got some goddamn fungus on it from when I washed dishes, nigga. Like, damn, that shit used to be so goddamn. You need some extra strength type shit. Man, that shit don't matter. <laughs> nigga, I'm talking about day in, day out, nigga. What but the hardest job. Watching this I was yeah, watching it, uh, my shit was a, so it was a Boston market, but it was a special concept where they had like an eat-in restaurant. They had like fancier food, but they had hella dishes in that bitch, bro. Them motherfuckers used to. Uh, I went off on them motherfuckers one day, cause motherfuckers, like, they had the waiters and shit, and them motherfuckers would just pile the shit up. Like, man, organize this shit, bro. Y'all, these niggas really trying to make a tower. A bitch would come in and look at me <laughs> and put something. I'm like, bitch, what are you doing? And, and dog, one day I knocked that shit over, bro. Like, I seen her do it, I said, young. <laughs> they was like, Stop piling it so high! They started fussing at them. And I was like, bro, I'm not the one putting them in here. All I do is put them in this motherfucker. I was the only one. Hey, the, it was a little dish room where it's just like a little four dish corner pit. junk. Yeah, it's like a little pit. And then they stick the shit in the um in the window. So the window would get all backed up and shit. Shit be falling on the floor. Then you got this big ass sink full of food chunks and shit. It was. But the hardest job I ever had was being a fucking laborer for like. Bricklayers. That was the hardest job I ever had. Oh, yeah. Hiding in a motherfucker from sun up to sundown. Nigga, your hands be so fucked up when you leave, you could take it like this and just rub everything off your shirt like shirt lint. Nigga, <laughs> shit was washing up. dishes, dog. Then you breaking up these pallets of bricks, right? And they outside. They been sitting out here for weeks. Just they making drop, the goddamn Because they got 20 fucking houses that they want brick. So they dropping off all the different colors of bricks. Now you opening this shit up, it's snakes in that motherfucker. Then half the pallet broke. All these these motherfuckers heavy. Every time a brick hits you, nigga, his skin coming off. Oh yeah, off. they coming off. Every time, every time, every time. Every time. he's coming off. Even the worst shit is taking the concrete. 
This shit heavy as a motherfucker, bro. This shit got to be 200, 300 pounds, it feel like. A wheelbarrow full of fucking concrete. Did the quick creep before you went? Man, 15, 16, 17, That's what I want, the quick creep before you went. <laughs> no, nigga, this is mixed. Oh, it's already done. Oh, okay. Hey, you got to take this shit. It's been raining. It's mud every fucking well. This is how you know the job was bad, but did you have nightmares? Then you got to hold up. Did you have nightmares? Did you have nightmares? Did you still at work? Yeah. Yeah. Then you got to hold up. So <laughs> that's how you know a job bad. If you ain't never had a nightmare, first... I don't ever want to hear about you talking about you had no bad job. Now this shit two stories you know So after they do the first shit where they, you know, arm, then you got to put all these scaffolds up. Then you got to take the concrete, make the shit, put it in the wheelbarrow, put it in a bucket, hand this shit up. This another 70 pounds. Do this shit about 10 times. What they were paying you, though? Know? Nigga, I think this was about, this might have been $20 an hour, but straight cash, though. Oh, that was good. But pay. nigga, the amount of work. <laughs> that was good. I, was, I told you, I was 14, 15, 16 nigga, doing this shit. That shit I'm at work with grown ass men with real problems. These <laughs> niggas get drunk work after program. work. They One of these motherfuckers ain't drunk. <laughs> it's all on me. I got to make this shit. Move it over here, fill it up, set the scalpels up, load up the truck, get the tools, scrape this shit off. Man, that shit, they the work the shit out of me, man. They all work your I head. had to work with this old drunk nigga named Screwball, right? That sounds about, that sounds like some shit of Screwball. Bro, one day, Screwball had this little short lady that he, like, she had to be about 400 pounds. He loved it there. He came home one day, somebody was putting big old country dick in him. Oh, man, Jody? he hurt. Hey, Joe Ball so fucked up. He drinking the tall. Joe will lick you up. He got a tall <laughs> bottle or some shit. The cheapest shit they sell at the liquor store. He just reaching in the window all day drinking this shit, telling me about it. I'm I'm 15. I got my own problem. You, he said, man, you you ever just you know just wanted to? Man, I just miss him, man. It, <laughs> I miss a little round ass man. I'm like, great. He came home, his bread man was putting thing off and whooped his ass with a fucking jack iron. That man had th 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 Whoa, 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 who got the ass with a screwball? Screw ball. God he damn. came home and the man was fucking his lady and whooped his ass with a jack iron. Then went back iron. to fucking He had about 200 stitches in his arm, man had hit. He tried to put his arm up, <laughs> man, that busted whole you can't, you shit. Well. Screwball that work with one arm. I was like, man, you might as well stay at the fucking house. You ain't doing shit but getting drunk and, and making me crap. <laughs> Bro, you get your ass whooped after you fucking. And he going back to fucking after you whooped your ass. Of course. He not leaving. Hey, hey, no, you don't have to leave. <laughs> that's your, that's what you think that nigga going to whoop your ass and then be like, it don't be here when I get back? Shit. <laughs> that's his no. house now. No. Don't yeah. slam my goddamn door. That nigga done whooped your ass and told you, all right, now, nah, you can stay. But they gonna be on that hollering and shit. Don't get on that back near, back to fucking your old life. Get on that blood on my road. This is one, this is probably like, like verbally, this is probably one of the coolest jobs I ever had. About two summers though, I did lay some pipe. <laughs> I did. I, 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 did. I was a pipe layer. <laughs> I used to run a pipe threading machine and I used to lay pipe. How you was discovering these jobs? The 15, 16, we were robbing and shooting. Yeah, you know what I, we were, I'm from a small we, town. I'm from a small town too. Listen to you. I'm talking about you can't even get away with no shit like that. I'm talking about if the moment your crime career started, they would have called it. Carlo got a gun. I wouldn't even got the usual motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the generation, my like, my, all my uncles and shit was like criminals and thugs and gangsters. They did all the shooting and the murdering and robbing and shit. Yeah. So I was protected. I couldn't have got into the street life if I wanted to. Yeah. I, I tried, but it didn't work. I'm telling. I would have had to go somewhere else to actually be in some street shit. That was. Yeah. I, my my name was what too hot. Is it? I'm from Oxford. I ain't never heard of that. Mississippi. What's the, Old what's Miss. You ever heard of Old Miss? Sure. That's where Old Miss is located. Okay. I'm from the hard ass city. I didn't want to be in the street life. I just wanted the money. I wanted to with try it. I wanted to, nigga. I wanted to look like I'm not doing that shit. Nigga. See, I grew, <laughs> and get that shit. I grew up so soft, bro. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to, to try to prove myself. So I got out and I started trying to hang with some niggas. I never forget. I knew I ain't had no business trying to be no thug when I was picking the game by what colors they were. 
See, I like, yeah, I like black. You like the black? Stupid. Yeah, I like black, so I'm gonna go with the GDs or whatever. Man, I'm hanging with these motherfuckers. They give me a 90 day probation. And and going to tell me, okay, now we got to jump you in. And they thought... The G's wanted to jump you in? They thought for six minutes. That's it. Shit. <laughs> Mark gave them their bandana back so goddamn <laughs> That's when I started buying pistols. I said, so I, what, they just let you in? So, so if you if you say, nah, I don't want to jump in, you ain't got no fucking jumps. I left. That's what I'm saying. My town was too small. We ain't had no gangs. Yeah, we just had niggas who didn't like That's what I'm saying. It, that's what it was. So why y'all want to jump me in? I know all y'all ain't been initiated. Y'all just see a little nigga and want to try to beat him up. Y'all, fuck y'all. I ain't by myself. So I start doing shit that you do by yourself, like selling crack. See, we just don't did neighborhood money. shit like that. Everybody got jumped. It was just fucked up when it was your turn. <laughs> and it made us stronger. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, it's that nigga birthday. Like, you ain't want to be around nobody you knew on your birthday. Oh, that Older did. cousins and shit like that. My neighborhood used to be like that. Everybody fought everybody. I say until about ninth grade. Are you from a small town, too? No, I'm just from... I'm, my, my family's from Pensacola originally, so... When I came up here, like down there in Pensacola, that shit was normal too. We fight everybody, goddamn it, and yeah, you know what I'm saying? Fight. Motherfucker, just come up. I bet I can beat you. At what? <laughs> Racing? <laughs> yeah, we weren't, we weren't, we weren't doing that in our town. We were popping. We were shooting for. I shot two people by the time I was fifteen. Was up. God damn. You did what now? I had shot two people by the time I was fifteen. Where you God from? Damn. But how old are you? Springfield. I'm thirty six. And can we talk about this? A little young. Yeah, this what? Oh, sure. this what he's Springfield, uh, Illinois. No, Tennessee. Tennessee. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna say you don't know. Oh, okay. oh, I forgot to tell y'all before we even get into this shit. You know how y'all be telling me to stay off social media and shit? Yeah. Now I be scrolling late night after the shows and shit, just watching all kind of interesting shit. Came across one of the most interesting niggas I ever watched on social media. This nigga got the craziest stories. This nigga's been locked up. He done shot niggas. He done had to do all the shit. That a nigga didn't want to do. I see he did. I see he wrote a book. <laughs> nigga wrote four of them. Yeah. yeah. He didn't get started yet. Damn. <laughs> Man, the motherfucker that racked up millions of views on TikTok and YouTube and shit like that. So I, I reached out to him. Quite entertaining. I was like, bro, this is the type of shit that we be sitting back talking about, man. So I had to get him to come in here and talk some of his shit in person, in the trap on the 85 South show. None other than. Joe T. Joe T. Baker, <laughs> AKA Boo <laughs> Baker. What you said? <laughs> Not real talk, man. Officially, <laughs> welcome to the 85 South really Show. Really I reached good. out and I told you I was going to get you on here, man. You got to tell your story, bro. Man, I feel man. like the people need to hear. I, I want to hear. I want to hear that shit. He, he took two out by how old you said? 15? I just I shot two people by the time I'm out 15. Yeah, so. see, I got to hear this. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm gonna grind up. I'm just, well, Take us all the way to the beginning. All the way to the beginning? Yeah. Well, well, how you want us, yeah. Where you want us to jump in at and just we, give we, first we, of all, give yourself an intro. Let let all the all your fans man, and followers okay, so know. Boom, y'all already know. There you go, right? <laughs> <laughs> y'all already know what time it is, you got, man. But uh man, they started out. You know, my mama dated the biggest dope boy in the city. You know what I'm saying? Me and my brother, young age, you know what I'm saying? They used to fight a lot. You know what I'm saying? We ain't, I ain't know what dope was, you know what I'm saying? And then one day we ended up playing around in the kitchen and went in the pantry. He had them bricks in there. My brother knew what, you know what I'm saying? My brother ended up jumping in the streets, got locked up. And when he got locked up, it's it just me. So I started jumping in the streets. By that time, I started hearing about my daddy. My daddy was GD. Uh -huh. My daddy was running penitentiary. Like he was a, what they called a nine trade. You know what I'm saying? Over the, you know what I'm saying? Over the whole institution. So by that time, my brother had came out here here about my brother was trying to sell dope. So he ended up giving my, my brother a plug. So my brother ended up coming home. Yeah. Yeah, so by the time my brother was 16, 17, he probably had a quarter million dollars. Like, I can literally go, like, I used to, yeah, lip down real time. Like, I can go lip up under the bed before I'm finna go to school. I'll take a hundred out of head, out of head one. You know what I'm saying? He don't even know it's missing. Yeah, that was before I started selling dope, but I always wanted to rob. But I told him I had my money and you from just hitting one lick. And he used to tell me, man, don't be doing that because I ever mess up his money. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody didn't nobody want to buy dope from him because of me. Oh, so they knew you were the motherfucker doing the wrong. Oh, yeah, for sure. So you bad face? I would, oh, uh, yeah. This is a small town. Like, everybody know what's going on. Everybody know what's going on. But everybody knows what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> Bad face and all. Get up. I, yeah. You now, know what it is. I would rob them dudes and sell them. I would rob them dudes and sell them on their own dope bag. Like, that's several stories. Like, it ran in somebody's house. He called, heard it with me, hit him for like seven and a half ounces. 
He called me, man, boo, they saying you got my work. I said, man, I ain't got the work, you know what I'm saying? But I ended up pulling up on him at his mama house because he kept saying it. I was like, I ain't got the work, but I see some work. He was like, well, what you, what you going to send me a four and a half for? 32 five. Sold him his own work right there at his mama house. He knew it was his work. But that's the beginning of the story, man. It was, it was just crazy. Like, once I started getting locked up, the first time I got locked up, we, was, uh, we broke in somebody's house. We stole like $1,500. And then my homeboy, my cousin, he ended up telling. We got locked up. Did he wait, get wait, caught? Wait, hold on, he got caught? Yeah, he got caught. Yeah, he got caught. Oh, yeah, he got caught. I was about to say, Cause man, the dude, Now, the dude, the dude, <laughs> the, the people house that we broke in, oh, he was in foster care. He was staying with them people. You know what I'm saying? Around the holiday, like, he know where they keep their money at. Like, he knew everything. So he telling us he got some clothes over there that, that he needed to go get. But when we get there, we come to find out, we finna break in, we finna take the money. So we go sh straight to the money. And so when the, they call the police, they say, it's only one person that know where we keep this money around this time. They go get him. He told on, you know what I'm saying, me and my homeboy, we end up getting locked up. Did five months, five days. I got out, stayed out a couple of months. I started stealing cars. Got locked up again. I did 10 months that time. Went to a YDC. It's, a, it's like a baby penitentiary. So after I got out that time, I ended up staying out like Probably not even a year. I caught my first. I caught my first case, attempted murder case. I think I was 16, going on 17. Shot a dude three times with a chopper, and I ended up uh, going on a high speed chase on that on that situation. And uh, while I was on high speed chase, I jump out the car. I'm running. I pass out. Well, I don't pass out. My body shut down. Like I'm literally. I get away from the police. I'm looking. Oh yeah, I'm looking at the police. Run towards me. Like I'm literally sitting here talking to myself. Like why I can't move. I thought I was paralyzed. They end up taking me to the hospital. And the doctor said I was low on potassium and water. So they gave me some bananas and gave me some water. And I'm sitting in there, literally, homie, and the police rolled the dude in that I shot on the stretcher. Like, he rolled through, butt up in the earth. He rolled through. They stopped him at the door. They said, is this the man that shot you? He was like, man, I don't know who shot me. I said, man, I'm finna get up out of here then. So I stand up, and the police like, ah, right, now you finna go to jail. I said, I can't go to jail. He like, are you going to jail? I said, I'm on 17. You got to take me back to Juvie. So they end up taking me back to Juvie. I escaped out of jail on that attempt, on, on the attempt to murder case. I wasn't there three days. I escaped out of juvie, stayed on the run for about, maybe about a month or two, came to the A. Came to the A. I was out here robbing people in the A. Like, we had a truck. I had a <laughs> stolen. Look, 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 check this out. Look, we had a... What you gonna do, square up now? Man, we, we literally driving down the highway in the A, like, Blocking car, like blocking the whole street out, jumping out, barefaced, like just robbing people, taking their wallets. We did it for about two hours. Went on a high speed chase out here and got away. What year was this? Let me see, I was about 16, 17 at the time. Let me see, I caught the 10th murder case at 17, going on 18, because I got bound over. So I, I was 17, whatever year that was, that probably about, let me see, I went to the penitentiary in 2007. So I say about 2004, 2005. About 2004, 2005, because I did a year on the nose for that case. I went, I got locked up January 5th. I got locked up November 16th. I escaped. I got caught January 5th. Bro, how you keep pulling out these great escapes, man? Look, That's look. That's what I'm going to say. You all right, lost your pants. Right. All right. The, you the, lost your pants, the, and I got another escape story. The first, the first escape, I don't know if you've seen the first church, the first Troy Johnny story, where I told him I was hearing stuff and seeing stuff. Mm -hmm. I was at the mental hospital. All right, so the, on the 10th murder case, they take me to this place in uh, Rutherford County. It's like, it's, it's right yeah, it's in Rutherford County. It's, it's like, yeah, Murfreesboro. Yeah, yeah real talk. It, it's, it's like a jail. They got the bars and everything in there. So when I get there, I got braids on the top. I got my plates in the back, got my grill in and all this. You don't supposed to have none of that. So the lady pulled me in the room and she was like, you gonna have to take your grill out. You gonna have to take your hair down. And I've been locked up four or five times there. I already, I know the procedure. Like, I know how it go. I'm like, man, I ain't doing none of that. Like, like what you gonna do? And she go and get two big dudes. They come back in there. I was like, man, I ain't taking my hair down. So when they come walking to him, I said, man, I'm hearing voices. They said, do what? I said, I'm hearing voices. Because <laughs> I already know what time it is. I'm finna try to play crazy and get out of the situation. She was like, I tell you what, you can come here, you can come to this back room with me. So when they go in the back room, they put me in this little bit of, it's just enough for me to walk a little bit back and forth. And I sit in there and I was like, man, what I'm finna tell these folks? I was like, man, I'm finna tell these folks I'm hearing voices. I come up with everything I'm finna say. I'm talking about fake crying, anything. The lady, <laughs> the lady come back around the corner. I'm, I'm crying too. She said, what's wrong with you? I told her I was hearing voices. So they call them mobile crisis. When mobile crisis get there, they got to put shackles on me to bring me out the room. So they got shackles on my legs. They got shackles, they got shackles on my legs and my arm. So when I come out of the cell, 
they walk me to the back, and it's a bar. It's a metal bar between, you know what I'm saying, my shackles. So I'm sitting there, and I'm rocking my legs, so it's... Oh, dramatic effect me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, so as I'm sitting there, and the lady answer me all these questions, I'm telling her, you know what I'm saying, I hear my granddaddy, you know what I'm saying, my granddaddy passed away. I'm telling her all this old stuff, and she tell me, well, I ain't gonna send you to Middle Tennessee tonight. So when she said, I said, what is Middle Tennessee? Crazy. Yeah, she said it's a mental health facility about 15 minutes from here. They house boys and girls. You know what I'm saying? You go up there, you get medicated, we'll get approved by the judge, and this, this, and that. And I said, what kind of facility is it? She said, it's like a hospital. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, that ain't a juvie, nine times 10. The doors, I could probably move around. So the next day hit, I pulled the same move, and they had to put an emergency transfer on me to send me to Middle Tennessee. As soon as I get there, they put me in the cell with this dude, they call him a cutter. Like, he got literally cuts all up his, his entire body. He cut Little white boy, he, he, I'm talking about, about, he about five, five. And I walk in, it's, it's about 11 o'clock at night when I walk in. As soon as I walk in, he jumps straight up. He said, hey, <laughs> how you doing? I kind of looked at him, I looked at his whole head and his boxers. Like, he literally got cuts on his toes and anything. And I said, I said, man, what's up? He said, what are you here for? I said, oh, he think he got a friend, he think I'm, I said, I said, uh, I said, man, I be hearing voice. He said, oh, really? I said, yeah, I be hearing. He said, <laughs> he said well, what, did, what did his voices be? So at this point, I'm thinking, I got, turn into your I, got, I got to go ahead and bust the move because I don't know if he going to tell. You know what I'm saying? So I started telling him all of this stuff, and he just sitting there. He was like, oh, wow. And so by the time I lay down, I hear him on his bed. He raised up, and he's like, I'm going to kill you tonight, Joe. And I'm, my back is to him. I'm looking at the wall, but when he stand up, I can see his shadow on my wall. So I'm laying there, he's like, I'm gonna kill you tonight, yo. And I said, man, I'm finna have to whoop this white boy here. And he walk, he get closer to me. By the time he leaned over me, he said, yo, I said, shh. He said, what, what is it? He changed his whole voice, he got no. He said, what's going on? He said, can you hear him voices? I said, shh. And he went right back to it. He said, I'm gonna kill you tonight, yo. And he leaned over me. I grabbed my pillow, turned around, grabbed his face, and smothered him in the pillow by the time I let him go. He said, oh, my God. He said, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. He said, we got to get up in the morning at 8 o'clock. We got to go to breakfast. And he ran in. He ran the whole thing, the whole thing down to me. Your ass ain't going. But when he, after he did that, we go, to, we go to breakfast, then we went to recess. While we at recess, it's a dude in there who had a handcuff key. And we are we playing ball, like we hooping, like the little white boy, he mad, like he imaginary shooting the ball. And when we sit down, dude was like, man, I'm finna get up out of here. He just pulled a key out. And I, I said, where you, I said, where you get that at? He was like, man, it's my only one. I said, man, you didn't let me have that. I said, for them folk come and get me. He like, nah, I can't give you the key. And my caseworker, John, he knew, like I had an escape history. So as soon as they told him I got transferred, he figured that's what I was trying to do. So he come up there. He pulled me in the room, he was like, man, you, you're not crazy. I'm gonna get these folks to discharge you right now. So I go in the day room, and they like, all right, what's going on? So I said, man, they finna discharge me, man, I'm finna leave. And they were like, man, that's messed up. I said, bro, let me get that key, I'm gonna come back and get you. I said, man, if I gotta run a car through the wall, I said, bro, I'm gonna come back. He said, man, you promise? I said, man, I promise I'm gonna come back and get you, man. <laughs> I, I, promise, I promise I'm gonna come back and get you. My boy went to the room, got that key, I put it in my mouth. We was in the van, I speed it out put both of the, the uh, shackles on one leg. My caseworker was writing the gas mileage down. Dude named Night Owl, he get out of the car, he like, man, come on, Joe. And I'm moving like I got the shackles on. And by the time my feet hit the ground, I was already running. And he's still sitting there, he just looking, cause I'm guessing he think I ain't finna get too far. By the time I turned around and looked at him, he realized I ain't, I shot across the street, it was over with. I went to a little, little facility, it was like a YMCA where they were hooping. I called my people, they came up there and got me. With the, the, the uh, what you had on? I had the handcuffs. Now, I took the handcuffs oh, and the What were you wearing? Ah, my clothes. When they transferred oh, me, yeah, yeah. When they tra yeah, yeah, I got my clothes. Yeah, they okay, had to put cool. my regular clothes when they transferred me. Yeah. That was, uh, that was the first case, but the one you seen, that was the jail. That was on the murder case. Yeah. Yeah, that was on the murder case. That was the, uh, that was in 2007. But that, that happened, that case was crazy because I ain't know, like, the situation happened, like, June 14 when dude, uh, when he ended up losing his life. It happened June 14th. I ain't get arrested until July 27th. So really, we thinking we done got away with it at the time. So I'm sitting in the house, and I had went and hired a lawyer, 
because I'm finna get ready to go to job course. But the same lawyer I hired, he was over a case because I had hit a lick for $125,000 when I was like 16. And the, the, the lawyer that I wanted hired, he was the lawyer to one of the dudes that got charged. And I went and paid him in $100 bills. And the story they told me, the lawyer took it as a smack in the face, like, you gonna come and hire me with my, that my clients got, you know what I'm saying? So he called and whatever, they, they bamboozled me. Damn. He tell me to be at the house. So yeah. the lawyer, oh, no, the, that's, the lawyer. How, that, that's how I'm free right now. Like him, Bo Taylor. <laughs> like, he the, he, the, he the reason why I'm free, because he did some bogus stuff, you know what I'm saying? When I went and hired him, whatever him and the DA had going on, he called me and he was like, man, I'm gonna come and pick you up. We're going to court, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm gonna get it approved. I got arrested July 27th. I had a court date the same day. I'm sitting in the house taking my hair down. I'm gonna go get my hair braided. My mama tap on the door. She walk in, she got the phone cover. She said, police on the phone. So when she say that, they ain't called my cell phone. Police know me like they, you know what I'm saying? So I look out the blind and it's an unmarked car across the street. I said, ah, oh, they finna get me. So I come out the back door to see if it's any police back, I'm gonna run. And then I ain't see no police back. I said, nah, they gonna try to kill me this time. So I called my homeboy that was involved in the situation. I said, bro, the police been out there? He was like, nah, why, what's going on? I said, man, I'm just asking. And then he, he, got, he got quiet. He said, bro, he said, man, go on down there and talk to him, bro. I said, for what? He said, bro, they just left my house. I said, why you ain't calling and tell me? He said, they finna charge you with everything. I hung up on up. Yeah, he ain't call you because he told you. He told. He was a second one. Yeah, he was a second So I go in the house. I ain't in there five minutes. They come through the front door, come through the back door. Big boy choppers. My mama in there, my daughter in there. They arrest me, charge me, especially A-Bay Robert, especially the kids that have first degree premeditated murder, then three counts of felony murder. And the felony murder just basically somebody dying in the commission of another crime. So they hit me with three counts of felony murder. So I go to the jail. The guy who actually pulled the trick on the case, he already down there because he had a tenth murder case. He had tried to shoot somebody and bullet ripped the shade off the ground, hit a girl in the neck. After? Oh. This was before. Oh, okay. This was before the, the case actually happened. When he did that, I'm staying in Clarksville, which is about 45 minutes from my hometown. All right. So he coming up there, he trying to chill with me, you know what I'm saying, basically why he hot. But when the, the murder case happened, he went on to turn himself in on Ain't me. Ain't that a military time? Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I'm on it. I'm four, yeah, four count. So when he turned himself in, he, he probably still think he was straight. So I come, I come down there to the jail. As soon as I walk in there, they put me in the cell with this white dude. And I walk in, he was like, man, what's your name? I was like, Boo. He was like, Boo Baker. I was like, yeah. He, he started reading my case right there. He said, man, man, bro, y'all crazy, bro. Y'all got out, man, the kidnapped dude, the dude. I said, man, hold on. I put my hand on the mic, on the thing. I said, man, who told you that? He said, man, your child partner down here doing story time every night. I said, dude, what? Like, he literally, my child partner in cell one, I was like in cell four. And this dude, I'm talking about, like, he was reading me detail for detail. And I was like, I, I was like, I said, I, I said, I, they got to get me out of the cell with you. I said, because you can literally tell the police I told you that, and you know too many details. They going to believe you. Right, right. I said, I got to get up out of here. He was like, no, nah, you good. I said, no, nah, ain't no such thing. Right, I'm he, good. I like you tripping. Uh -huh. So when we came out for Rick, I go down and holler in my char part. He comes to the door. I'm looking at him. He look at me. We're looking at each other. I said, man, I said, man, what you down here doing? He said, man, we're going to be good. I said, no, no, no. I said, man, dude, no. He said, man, them dudes ain't. I said, bro, you tripping. And, I, and when I looked at him, I said, bro, I said, man, you act like I'm, you glad I'm down here with you. He said, boo, all the stuff you done got away with, bro, you supposed to been down here anyway. Damn. That's what he told me. too. That's what he told me. I, yeah. I'll never forget it. And when he said that, I said, I'm about to play. You ain't even talking about what we did together. Man, you? listen. Yeah. I said, bro, I said, I'm about to play crazy. He said, man, that ain't going to work. I said, well, we're going to have to find out. And <laughs> we're going to have to find out. And uh, I ended up getting a fight with the police that day. My cousin was the captain of the jail. That's, that's where this come from, them cuts. That's how I ended up getting down in uh, what they call the observation cell. They had to take me down there and watch me like I'm on suicide watch. But really, it was because I was trying to get downstairs. So when I finally do get down. You did, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I thought that might have been the ankle. Why are you? No, 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 that's it. That's it. Get that's it. Yeah, no, that's it. Right. That's it. Uh, so when I get down to the observation cell, I'm down here wrestling with the police every day, fighting with the police every day. One day I'm flooding, I'm flooding the cell for about 30 minutes before they even recognized our flood. The other inmates started complaining. And so this is lady named Miss Hooberry. She was a sergeant. She used to let me out to clean up. And uh, one day <laughs> she let me out. I'm cleaning up. And she and this dude come in to make bond. 
And she was like, step back in the cell real quick. She was like, I'm going to let you out when I get him processed in. But when she closed the door, she didn't lock it. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, Ah, she tripping. Tired up. So yeah, <laughs> so I, I hit the light and turn it out like I'm asleep. I'm thinking maybe she'll forget. And at that time, they thinking I'm I'm trying to play crazy, so they they bringing me medication. I'm taking uh, Trazodol, Seroquel, all that old crazy stuff. They come around the corner, the woman with the cart, and she was like, Baker, you want your medication? And she grabbed the door and pulled the door open. And as soon as she pulled it over, she said, who left the baker's door open? Y'all know you're high risk and all this, this, this. I said, dang, that's L, my lad, that was it right there. About two weeks passed. When I flooded it that day, the police come in my cell. They got this thing called the chair. They restrain you. You can't do nothing. So they tell me they finna put me in the chair. I'm like, man, I ain't going to no chair. Not this time. That's over. I end up getting a fight with the police. I slam one of them in the water. I turn around. One of them, get, the other one getting ready to punch me. And my cousin, the captain of the jail, came out the door. He said, if you put your hands on, I'm going to fire you right now. And I got one cuff hanging off my hand. I said, yeah, what you going to do? He was like, and he, he couldn't even do nothing. So I ended up sitting outside, and I asked my cousin. I'm sitting in the pod. I said, cuz, I said, why you just going to get me transferred to the penitentiary? Like, what you think I'm trying to do, run? He was like, are you? I said, listen to him. I said, many folks don't try to let me go one time, cuz. I said, next time I'm going to leave. He said, and I'm going to tell you what. If I get a call and they say, you done left his jail, I'm going to fire everybody on the shelf. I said, well, you get ready to fire him. <laughs> Man, it, was, it wasn't two days later. I'm cleaning up. This dude, I can hear him outside. I'm finna make bond. I ain't going to no whole cell. My family followed me up here. And I said, look, and I'm thinking, I'm hoping that's one of my homeboys. He come through. I don't know him. Who bears? She did the same thing. She said, Joe, step in your cell real quick. She said, I'm going to get him processed in, and I'm going to let you back out. And this time she closed the door, I, she winked at me. She closed the door and, and hit me. I said, oh, yeah, she trying to let me go. I'm, I'm a, and I'm finna leave. I hit the light, laid down, lady come around. Baker, I said, no, nah, I don't want no meds. I'm straight. She went on back around the corner. She said, you sure? I said, yeah, I'm good. Third shift came in. They ain't checked the door. They ain't seen if it was locked, nothing. I got out of the bed, pushed the door a little bit, seen it was still unlocked, closed it. Laid back down, waited about 30 minutes. Dude said, I know my people out there. And dude, it was three people. It was a big dude and two ladies. He said, yeah, it's people out there. He said, go on and um, let him out the whole cell. One of the ladies came out, let him out. The other lady, she said, you want me to go ahead and buzz his people in? And in the county, you got, you got two doors. When you come through that one, you're supposed to wait till that's secure before the other one out open because it's a security breach. Both of them don't supposed to be unlocked. You got to be in the middle and wait till that one locked so they open the other <coughs> But I can hear everything. The lady hit the button. It went, er, clah, they echo real loud. And I'm just laying in the bed, and I hear her go, er, clah, and I said, I said, she just opened both of them doors. And I stand up, and I'm just standing there looking. Dude talking crazy. I just barely pushed the door. Pow. It, everything started moving in slow motion. The dude turned around. The lady turned around. Dude said, I was already gone. Ran out of jail. I'm running downhill. I flip. As soon as I bounced up, my first thought was I just escaped on a murder case. Like he folks finna kill me. And I looked up at the at the top of the hill, and the officer said, he said, Joe, don't do it. I said, it's over. I went across the street, my home, but <laughs> I ran across the street. It's over. It's done. Like it's done. Like we're in town. And then, <laughs> yeah, but that's it. I ended up laying in a car for about three, four hours, man. I waited for the sun to come up. I laid in a car. Like, one of my homeboys, his car was, his car door was unlocked. I just laid down in the dashboard. So it was close to the jail? Yeah. Where yeah. Is car? You told him? You I you know. Where the, where the county jail is, like, it's a neighborhood right across the street. Like, my homeboy stayed in the neighborhood of called Indian Hills. So you knew his shit was unlocked? Oh, no, no. I was checking everybody. No, I was checking everybody, though. I was checking everybody, though. I just ended up getting... I just checking everybody, though. You would have got anything Yeah, I was laid in anybody's car. By the time I got to his... By the time I got to Big Devin car, so he's, I laid in there, it was box Chevy, man, white, red seats, and I, I laid in there and chilled. And then by the time the sun came, I went to my homeboy house. The girl I was messing with at the time, I ain't even know she was already, I ain't been locked up two months. She was already over my homeboy house. Man, God, damn, ain't listen, no way to find out. No, listen, listen. I go to my homeboy house, 
I know where he keep the key. I go in. I go in the house. Oh, I take a shower. I'm talking about. Wash, I'm brush my teeth with his toothbrush in it. I, I get. I lay in the bed, and they got the. It's the upstairs part. Like downstairs, you can go upstairs in the house and go, but they don't know I'm down there. So I come out of the house because I don't want them to know I'm in there. I walk up the hill and I tap on my homeboy window, and. He, he looking at the blinds. I can't, I'm like, come downstairs, come downstairs. I do that three times. He don't never come down there. But they don't know I'm already in the house. So I'm like, why he ain't coming down here? I said, man, you know what? I'm going to go on. I go up the stairs in the house and knock on the door and let them know I was in the house. And his daddy said, who is it? I said, man, it's Boo. He said, I don't know how you got in here, but you got to get up out of here. I said, man, just let me in here. I'm already out. Yeah, okay. no, I didn't know the police had went to their house. Like, oh, they, okay. like it was my best friend's house. Okay, right. So they had already been there. When they had already went there. Why yeah. you was in the car? Why I was in the car? Oh, was in the car. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So when I get in there, I'm looking. I'm like, where's my homeboy? And she come around the corner. I said, oh, that was you? She was like, what is it? I said, man, that's crazy. I said, I need a ride. And Andy hollered. She, she can't take you nowhere, boo. Man, you can tell me that, man. She finna take me. She already over. She finna take me to my homeboy house. And I end up going to Clarkville, and the same dude that told me to go down there and talk to the police that they just came took me. He rolled with me. And then, it's between him and another dude, called the police and told him where I was at. That's how I ended up getting caught. I'm in the house. When I get to Clarksville, Look, look, check this out, check this out. Now, look, 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 check this out. Now, now. I y'all ain't hear nothing then. I'm sitting on, I'm sitting on this back porch. Friends like these. And it's a, it's a dude, it's, I'm at this girl house and her brother pulled up. When her brother pulled up, as soon as he walked on the porch, he kind of jumped. He was like, how you, he was like, how you get out of jail? You got a half a million dollar bond. I was like, I want to get a bond reduction. They knocked it down. He was like, how much? I said, dang, what's up? He was like, well, uh, your child? I said, oh, he still ain't get him no bond reduction. He was like, oh, that what's up? You hungry? I was like, nah, I'm straight. And he walk in the house, and well, he, they got a TV in their kitchen. When he walk in the house, the news come on, breaking news. I, I'm the first thing on there. He comes. I'm the first thing on there. He comes straight back out. He said, he said, bro, you could have told me you escaped. I said, man, I ain't. He said, bro, you? I said, no, nah, I don't want to need. I just want to lay down. I laid down one thirty minutes. The little brother came in there, shook me, took out running. By the time I heard the back door close, police was on the bullhorn. Mr. Baker, we know you're in there. We don't want you hurt. We don't want none of us hurt. We just need you to come on out of the house. It was a whole little situation. But that's, that's how I ended up getting transferred to the penitentiary before I was supposed to even, I was in penitentiary before I was even got convicted. I wasn't even supposed to be in the penitentiary. Cause didn't know jail in my county want to hold me because I was a high risk. So you maximum security. So yeah, I was max security for the first, for the two years for two years and three months fighting my case. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Why yeah. did why? Okay, hold up though. You said the lady winked at you. What you thought that? What that I was about? I thought she was trying to tell me I could leave. Right, but what, I she, believe So that. what? She was she was she was on you a little bit or what? The... No, no, she wasn't. She was an older lady, man. It's crazy. I talked to her my last like <clears> my last six months in the penitentiary. She was one person I always want to talk to when I wrote my first book, mm -hmm. and she ended up, she was working at McDonald's in a Walmart down there in my hometown. And uh, the girl I was talking to at the time had seen her. She was like, I seen Hooberry. I said, man, tell her I want to talk to her. So she gave her the number, I called her. And I was like, man, I just wanted to apologize to you I always wanted to. And she broke down crying, and she was like, I always seen something in you. She was like, I heard about your book and this, this, and that. And she was like, but I want you to know. She said, that night, that one decision, because you were desperate. She said, I lost my job. I couldn't pay my kids college. She said, I had to sell my dogs. Like, she was one of them people in the journey I realized in a split decision because of what I had going on, like, affected this woman's entire life. Yeah. She was like, I couldn't work for the city no more. She was like, I've been in Walmart ever since. Lost her house. Like, literally, she lost everything. And, yeah. If you the newspaper clip, that's what it say. I, uh... Three officers, I think it was three or four officers got fired. So you're coming on bullshit? He fired them the next day. Everybody that was downstairs. Damn. Yep. Everybody that was downstairs, but yep. <laughs> this nigga know how to escape. <laughs> <laughs> nigga. Well, yeah, that, about, but yeah, that. But that. You can, bro. And then a little more of the story. I, uh, me, my dad, and my brother was in the same penitentiary. Like, me and my brother was settled at one point in time. Got to fight with my brother. I, I damn near killed him. In the what the fuck he do to you? 
when we when I first when I my brother was already at the penitentiary with my with my daddy. And my daddy, he was big on selling tobacco. So they moved him to a penitentiary in Tennessee called Turner Center. When he get down there, he had my brother move. And me coming off maximum security after I took my time, they got this thing, you gotta go from, you're supposed to go, it's like a classification where they add your points up and it's gonna tell you your security. You're gonna be max close or medium or medium restrict, whatever that is. So my points were so high, it put me on close. Uh -huh. So I go from max 23 and one to close basically 22 and two. And while I sit back there, them few months, my brother and my dad was on the compound. So after I finished that, I come out to the compound, me, my brother, and my dad, we all in the same unit. Like we literally walk with my daddy to his job and just sit in there and like kick it. And uh, my daddy ended up getting hemmed up again with some tobacco. They moved him to another penitentiary called Northeast. So when my daddy left, I moved my brother in the cell with me. I'm, I'm so y'all just got pulled like a motherfucker around my here. Daddy, my daddy was, yeah, he, yeah, he was. But once uh, I moved my brother in the cell, like, I'm I'm really jelly. Like, I'm doing penitentiary. Like, I got, like, six, seven, eight years left. I got heroin in the cell. I got weed in the cell. I got tobacco in the cell. I got the phone in the cell. Everything. I got everything <laughs> in the cell. Like, yeah, I, got, I got everything in the cell. Ball, and my daddy, what they call it grandfather then, like they used to have the big boy boom boxes. You know what I'm saying? And when he got moved, I had, had it in my cell, so I, so I still had it. And we in there bumping that old Jesus during count time. And I'm telling, bro, you can't do that during count. Like, I got, my brother and him, he got like six, seven months left. I got a bid. And he was like, man, bro, don't turn that down. I was like, man, you tripping. I was like, you gonna take any charges? Man, bro, I ain't taking no charge. I said, you gotta turn the radio off then. And he just kept the radio I smashed the radio. He get up, I pushed the radio under the bed. I said, man, look here, bro, that's, that's over. You ain't taking no charges, bro, you ain't. And he, he bucked me, tried to treat me like little bro. And I told him, I said, bro, you do that again, that's on granddad, I'm gonna smash you in here. And he was like, dang, you'll do that? I said, I'll tell you what then. I said, when, I, I said, when the doors pop, I'm gonna go holler at the folks. I said, whoever lose the fight gotta move out of the cell. He said, bro, you'll go tell the folks. I said, bro, that's the only way it's really gonna work out, cause evidently you don't, you don't care nothing about me doing right. all the time. Right, right. And he stood up, he said, man, bro, hold up. And then he go to sit back down, but then he went on and got up and come towards me. I smashed off in there. But that's, <laughs> I moved him out of the cell. And he ended up going home. And then I ended up getting out of GD a little bit after that, which is a whole nother story. You got I, out in jail. Yeah, yeah. One of the only probably is done. Probably did it. <clears throat> that was a that was a blessing. The story with the uh, the crib dude. I think you brought up rolling sixty. So that's that's really how it all started. I had a position at the time called the COS, Chief of Security. And being Chief of Security, like I'm over, like I really can I can tell you go lock down in your cell and stay in there till tomorrow. Like, I, I had the authority to do that. Yeah. If I, you know what I'm saying, I gotta have a legitimate reason. Like, bro, you, you know what I'm saying, you been horse playing or just whatever, whatever, bro, go on the cell. And so, at the time I got a move, which I had somebody going to visit, putting some in them and bringing it back to me. So the dude, I ended up losing my phone, and the dude that was the crip, he had a phone, I was cool with him. And he pulled up on me one day, he was like, man, Joe T, you be a visit. He really trying to peep guy. He like, man, you be a visit every week, you know what I'm saying? I already know what you got going on, and this, this, and that. He was like, man, let me put something in the mood. And then he was like, man, I'll let you use the phone. So I'm like, oh, we, can, we can work that. Let me holler at the girl, you know what I'm saying? I'm holler at my guy, whatever, what you want to put in there, I won't have for He was like, oh, that ain't nothing. He said, man, I got some morphine pills, I got this, I got perks, and do do I said, you got it right now? He said, man, Joe T, I got like 100 pills. I said, all right, we finna call her right now. He pulled the phone out. I said, here, and this one thing you don't do in Pentel, you don't get nobody your gal number or none of that. Right, right. But we finna do business. I'm affiliated, you affiliated. You know what come with that. Right. So I ain't tripping. So I give them the information. I said, hook up whatever, tell your girl, pull up with whatever need to be done. Two, three days go by. The girl get the pump, she get the bomb. I need to use the phone. I go in the cell. I was like, bro, let me use the phone real quick. He give me the phone. I'm going to text her first and tell her I'm finna call. They got messages all in there, bitch. It's a whole thread in there. And I'm sitting in the cell, and I'm just, I can just kind of strolling, and I'm watching them. It's a <laughs> good, good morning, babe. Oh, God. I, God. Good, mor <laughs> good morning, King. I ain't uh, tripping on her. I ain't really tripping on her. It ain't my gal, but it's my mood, though. Like, right, you tripping, right, right, bro. Right, They're right, like, right. this is my bread. Like, 
This is four five thousand dollars a week, yeah, bro. bro. You, 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 yeah, you get and and, and and I know your information in the phone. So in my head, I'm like, you know, penitentiary rules is in effect. So I, I said, bro, I said, I said, man, I need to go to the phone. I said, I need to go. You know what I'm saying? Private. He was like, go ahead. He was like, go ahead, go ahead, Joe T. So I called. I said, did he try to holler at you or you try to holler at him? Cause I'm finna take it to the folks. Yeah. I'm finna go and buzz my move. I'm finna take the phone. And he, she said, he tried to holler at me, he messaged me and was talking about how much money you was really making and I was get, you was getting over on me, you only give me $150, you making $4,000 off an ounce and this, this and that. I said, he told you all that? And she, it had to been too, because she knew the penitentiary language. Yeah. 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 I said, I'll bet. I get off the phone, I went straight down there and hollered at my guy. I said, look, check this out. I pulled the phone out, I said, man, Cam, I tried to holler at my girl. I said, bro, I said, I'm taking the phone. He said, you can't do that, because he was the big homie. He was over at all the Crips. He said, bro, you can't. I said, I, I said, well, we'll tell him I want a one-on-one. He said, you know, they ain't going to let you fight a one-on-one. So at that point, I got to pull a penitentiary strategic move to make it happen. <laughs> so, so, so I come out of the cell and just start saying stuff out loud in the air. You know what I'm saying? Calling them names, talking crazy. So at this point, all the affiliations going to be like, who are you talking to? You know, you know what I'm saying? It's, man, who little Joe T talking to? He tripping like he. And then at that point, everybody get to talking. And my trial partner was tripped too. So it ended up getting to him. And he come over. He like, man, what's going on? And I told, I said, man, look, your homeboy. He said, what you gonna do? I said, I'm gonna smash him. He said, hold on. He leave out all the G's. It was about four, five G's in the cell, six, seven Crips in the cell. He sitting on the table. And uh, they were like, man, so this the situation. And my child partner was like, man, forget all that. Joe T, what you want to do? I said, I'm finna beat him. They looked at the big homie. He was like, so what you want to do, Cam? You want to fight him? He said, man, not really. Like, this is the big homie over here about it. Like, That's he, the one who was texting your girl? Yeah. OK. He said he didn't want to fight me. With him doing that, this is the dude who make all the calls, get you smashed, get you sent to PC. He won't even put in the work that he'll tell y'all to do. So it was it was bad. So at that point, they like, man, you could just, y'all can roll out of the cell. They smashed him off. I was on probation at the time with the G's because I stayed into something. And it's my charge partner. So they thought I had told him to do it because he actually took the phone because the G's made me get a phone back. He took the phone, bring it to me, told me to unlock the phone and do whatever, whatever. And the dude called his people, and they called the compound and had the compound locked down. And so when they do that, my char partner, when he beat him, he had a, some blood on his shirt. He took the shirt off and put it in my cell. So when they came and locked down, they ended up searching, and they find the shirt. But then they were putting the penitentiary numbers on the shirt. So they knew the blood, that shirt was in my cell, but they knew the shirt didn't belong to me, so they ended up what they call private investigation. They P.I. me and my child partner. They watch the camera, they end up, of course they charge him with assault. But while we back here, the G's done made a call on me to smash me off the compound as soon as I come back, regardless of where I go. Ain't no hearing, ain't no write-up, ain't no nothing. Joe T, he, he smashed off, it's, it's over with. I ain't even knowing this. So while I'm in the house, while I'm in the hole, I told you this nigga like it's a movie, man. It's a blessing, it's a blessing because while I'm in the hole, a dude come from, a, it's, it's called Columbia, Tennessee, and he had killed uh, a G. And they had already made the call that when he come to the penitentiary, no matter where he go, to get smashed as soon as he come on the compound. So while I'm in the hole, this dude comes to the penitentiary where I'm at, and the Gs, they made the call, and they they stuck on him, and they locked down the whole compound. So they moved all the Gs. They stuck on him, what, what do you mean? They stabbed him. Never. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, they end up stabbing officers in any time, everything at time. Damn. But they shut the compound down, and they moved all the Gs, majority of the Gs and majority of the Crips. But when they moved the Gs, they moved the administration, which is the the high-ups, mm -hmm. like the nine trade, the assistant nine trade, the security. Like, they moved the one, two, and three, and the four, which means that the call that was made is void. So when I come out of the hole, I ain't know what's going on. They saying they was gonna have to run a ballot to see who was gonna be over the compound. They wanted me to be on the ballot to be the number one. But I ain't even knowing they done made a call on me. So I'm sitting down talking to my homeboy, a youngster. And he was like, man, Joe T, we was gonna ride with you, bro. I said, ride with me for what? 
He said, bro, they made a call on He said, there's nobody's here. You're at the bottom of the hill. Like, they made a call to say they were going to smash it. He was like, but we ain't honoring the call because the, the administration gone. I said, they want me to be the number one, and them folks were going to put their hands on me. He was like, yeah, bro. He was like, I said, ah, oh, nah, take me out the ballot, bro. I don't even, like, that was, I was, at that point, I was really tired. Because <clears throat> what you said, that six minutes? Yeah. I took a six minute. Yeah. Because I took a phone from a dude that wasn't, he wasn't nothing. We went half on the phone. I tricked him. <laughs> but next thing, we go half on the phone, and I quit letting him use the phone, and he what they call a friend of the folks. And he went and told the folks. They try to make me get a phone back. Make a long story short, I try to finesse it again. Yeah. And it didn't work. Yeah. And that's what they call disruption of organizational unity. And they said I caused a big ruckus. So I ended up getting a six-minute violation. I'm fighting three people at one time, one rotating for when one get tired. Oh, they about oh, kill me. Yeah. Man, they about kill me. Oh, so these niggas tagging in like a video game, nigga. Nah, nah, real, nah, real talk. So these niggas just... <laughs> yeah, like he tired, bro. Get fresh hands. They call it, get fresh hands. You catch your breath. You yeah. go ahead whoop his ass. Nah, they about... They... nigga over there that got... Yeah, that's... Yeah, they about right, kill okay. me. Nah, they, they about kill me now. I was tired then, but then when they did that, I was really tired. And then it was another brother who uh, wanted to... They, it's called plugging out or getting out count. That shit well, crazy, that's, man. Nah, nah. <laughs> nah, it's real crazy. <laughs> nah, don't send a new nigga. I, I, I ain't done with you. Give me that nigga. Give me that nigga. I almost got this nigga, man. Give me that nigga, man. But, uh... <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, they did, they did something bogus. They did something bogus to a young dude, man, and I was like, man, it's over with. And I, 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 I still... That was the last drop. I still... I, I had ended up taking a lower spot at the time. And something else happened, and they come in the cell, and they talking. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, I can't keep doing it, bro. Like, I'm a man before anything. Like, I don't like men escorting me to the shower. I got to report everything. If I want to go across the hall, I got to tell somebody to AA me. Man, come on, bro, walk with me. I got to go across the hall. Like, hold on, bro, I'm going to use the bathroom. Man, I'm finna go across the hall. Like, I got tired, and I handed them my paperwork. Why they talking? They like, bro, what this is? I just sit there. They read it, and they like, bro, you sure you want to do this? I said, bro, whatever got to happen at this point, it's got to happen, bro. I said, I'm tired, it's over with. But I, I I was straight, though. I ain't had nothing bad on my name. Like, I was good. I really wasn't even worried about it. We got a new administration, it's chill, and I knew the number three, man, he was like this. So when I gave him the paperwork, I called the number three, come and see me. And we sitting down at the library. I said, bro, I said, it's over. He said, what you mean? I said, nah, I said, because I knew he ain't got his paperwork yet. I said, I need you to tell me I'm straight, though. He said, what'd you? I said, bro, I'm done. I said, I need you to tell me I'm straight. Because at that point, can't beat the mob. Like, yeah. if he would have told me I went straight, I would have went to PC. I wasn't even going to let my pride get in the way. I would have been like, bitch. I would have went back, packed my stuff, and went to the back. I ain't finna get stabbed to try to prove nothing. Like, I done seen it too many times. Yeah, yeah I'm not finna do that, bro. So he was like, bro, you straight? I said, bitch. I walked out of there. This the number three. This the one that's got to make the call. I took his word for it. It was about two days later. I walked out, I seen the number one, Big Joe at the time. He did me like this in the window. I said, oh, he said, you straight. I went straight to the room, took my shoes off, put my shower shoes on, and walked to the shower on my shower shoes. You ain't know, supposed to do that, especially when you're affiliated. Don't nobody really do it in the penitentiary because it's, right, it's, a, it's a breach of security. You, you vulnerable in your shower shoes. So I did that to make a statement to let it, but I walked straight to the shower and the air affiliation in there was looking like, he ain't got no security, and he got his shower shoes on. Whatever got to happen, got to happen. And I, I walked away. I walked away. That's crazy. But then I, <laughs> after I walked away, three, four weeks later, I got moved to the other penitentiary with my daddy, where I got engaged with the police. You seen that one? <laughs> <laughs> you got engaged? Now, look, before you go into this, man, all the people who watching, you see it's quiet here, everybody listening, man. Let them know where they can find you at. Go catch all of these stories and episodes yeah, that you be running, bro. Yeah. Let them know where they can talk. You gotta go to you gotta go to my YouTube, man. It's my Joe, it's my name, Joe Baker. Uh that's that's across the board, really, man. You type in Joe Baker, I'm my Instagram gonna pop up, my YouTube gonna pop up, Facebook gonna pop up, TikTok gonna pop up. Okay. And, and anything that I'm saying is in my book called uh, The Life of Boo Baker. Where is it? Where the book is? It's, it's right though. Put them shits up here, man. <laughs> Put them shits up here, bro. Real talk. Real. And you can get How the book on the that? website, right? Huh? How you flip that, man? The book? 
Yeah, man. How you, you, how you, do some shit. you got, you got the story? Where, where you got the idea? Like, man, I gotta write this shit, bro. I gotta man, put I wrote, it down. I, I wrote my first. The first three I wrote, like I made, I, like I made up a story of bits and pieces of my life. And when I came home, you know, I was traveling. I was going to kiosks. Like I used to go to Cumberland Mall. I was in Perimeter. Come on, man. I used to, yeah, you work in the mall. Yeah, yeah. I used Come to post on, up man. in the yeah. And when people used to ask me, they were like, "Is this all your story?" Because I used to, you know, what I'm saying, tell them. They was, I was like, "Nah, I'm not. and everybody was like, "Man, we want to read your story." So I ended up, man, I'm sitting at the house one day. I said, man, I'm finna do it. I pulled a recorder out. I, I did it in one day, 10 hours. I recorded the whole story straight. Sent it to this girl. She can type as fast as you could talk. Like yeah. she, It wasn't 21 days. Come like on, I, I had the book in my hand. Come on, bro. I probably was selling probably 45 books a week at the time. I'm thinking that's something. I'm fresh out of penitentiary. It man, is, man. Fuck that, dog. No, that, it was no, something. That's yeah, something. That's but see, but what it had for it was, you. It was a, it, it, but, see, <laughs> but see, I'm at this, look. I ended up jumping on TikTok. This girl had been telling me to get on TikTok and tell the story. I was like, man, I ain't getting on there. Like, people dancing on there. And I got on there, man, and look, by the third post, I told that escape story out of the jail. Man, I went to sleep, woke up, 250 books sold in about three hours. I started selling 1,000 books a month for about two years straight. Let's go. You hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna pray to the most high. Let's go. Let's go. But, uh, but you yeah. did it in a way like that where it, it wasn't no it wasn't no whole bunch of goddamn in between thinking. You said you went from I'm gonna do this shit and you recorded it and it went straight to it, man. Man, everything I do, I do it that way. That's that's, when, that's what hold a lot of people yeah. up, man. I think people need to hear that too, bro. Now, that's real that's, shit. Now, because that's 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 one thing I learned, like, bro, when I came home after doing ten. Like, everybody was in the same place, doing the same thing, having the same conversation. Like, that's scary. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, Very. After doing 10 years in that cell like that, and then you you thinking people progressing. You thinking, and come home, everybody still broke. Everybody still selling dope. Everybody who was selling dope that ain't selling dope, doing dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, all my homeboys still talking about, man, we, man, what's up, man? I wasn't home three days, went to see my homeboy. They call a girl up there talking about, we finna run out. Like, bro, I just done 10 years. Like, that's, that's what you offering me at the 10? I said, man, give me some money. They pulled out the pounds of weed. Where we got it coming through the mail and threw me three pounds. I said, bro, I don't want that. Bro, I ain't been home 72 hours. Like, what is, like, y'all tripping. And at that oh, you was corrected by then. Yeah, I'm through. Like, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then another thing is, like, in my situation, even in keeping it real, like, I realized that ain't, it ain't nothing in the streets. Like, uh, you go to the penitentiary and you ain't tell, like, it ain't honored because I feel like the person who done it didn't take the charge, smash him. Why, why, y'all, you don't want nobody to tell, but y'all ain't telling the person who done it, own it. Like, that ain't, that wasn't gangster to me. Like, I shouldn't even have to, bro, you know that wasn't part of the plan. You did that, true enough, we in it. Eat your charge. Right. And we go to the penitentiary, and I tell, I get smashed, but I don't get to say, man, bro, you did something bogus, bro, smash him. Like, yeah. the streets ain't, it wasn't what it's, and I lived it through and through. I ain't never done a drug, never been high, never popped a pill, never done coke, never took a drink, none of that back in the street. Like, I Let lived. me ask you this, when, like you were saying earlier, what was the moment where you are like, shit, I'm through with everything, after in all the, the shit? In the cell with my daddy. Uh, <clears throat> when I got in the cell with my daddy, my pops got two life sentences. You know, he was the one recommended that I, that I become the folks. He was the one gave my brother my plug, gave me my plug. You know what I'm saying? Life is all this from jail. All this from contention. Like, and I'm sitting in the, and I got up to use the bathroom one night, probably about two, three in the morning. And we in a bathroom, like my dad on the bottom bunk, like he's snoring. I'm using the toilet. And then I'm washing my hands. I turn around and looked at him. He was laying down. I was like, this, this, this crazy. Like it don't. Even, I'm engaged to the police officer at the time and everything. We got every, we got everything in the cell. I'm like, man, I'm finna go home in two years. Like, Pop got two life sentences. Like, he, ain't, he doing what he feel he gotta do. I was like, now nah, this, I can't go home like this. My daughter, I can't go home like this. So, uh, Joe T, how you engaged to the police, man? <laughs> uh, finesse, <laughs> penitentiary rules in effect, man. Uh, when dramatic I, effect, yeah, please. dramatic effect, me, man. So, right. with the with the officer. How that happened, man, um, when I get there, of course, they, I get in the cell with my pops, and they, and like, every two, three months, like, they, you'll see them bring the trainees, like, the new officers. So they bring the new officers through, and they got her standing out at the gate, and everybody going out there, because that's how dudes, when the, when, the new, when the new girls came, everybody want to see them. 
So as a dude, man, he came, he came and got me. And he was like, man, bro, can he like, man, Joe T, you gotta come out here real quick. My dad was like, go, go, where he going? I was like, it's too late to be my daddy, bro. He can't be asking me where I'm going this time. I'm gonna go out here and see the again. So I go out there and I see him, but everybody already thirsty over. I said, I ain't even gonna do that, because she gonna, she gonna already see that. And she ended up our permanent officer in the pod. I told my dad, I said, I'm gonna get her. He said, boy, that girl don't want you. I said, I'm telling you, I'm gonna get her. So one day, I come in, I'm working in the wood plant. I don't never go out there to work out. I don't never be in her face. I don't never say nothing to her. I come in, straight from work, take my shower, go right back in the cell. So one day, my daddy, he's like, man, bring her some, go get some ice. So I'm walking to get the ice. And as I'm walking by, she said, hey. I said, what's up? She said, you don't never come out of the cell. I said, there ain't nothing out here to see when I'm coming out the cell for. I keep on walking. I get the ice. I come back through. She like, hey, come here for a second. <laughs> <laughs> so I walk over, I'm like, what's up? I don't really talk to the police or nothing like that. But she ended up looking on the list, and she was like, your name is Baker. You 41, 41, 46. This one is Baker. He 14, 36, 41. She was like, I was like, I'm in the cell with my daddy. She was like, Dude, what? I said, yeah, I said, that's my, like, I'm in the cell with my pop. She was like that, but I could tell in her eyes, like, it kind of intrigued her. So I just went on, I walk off going to cell, I chill for her. She used to come up, hang by the rail. And then one day, I walk up on her. And uh, now before that, I come down the stairs and she say, I don't trust him. I think he'll do something to me. And it was a white dude that just walked by. He was crazy, though. She said that shit? She said it. Yeah, she said it to me. And I was like, why you feel like that? She was like, I just got a feeling. I think he'll do something to me. I said, like, she said, I think he'll snatch me in the cell and this, isn't it? I said, oh, he'll be gone in the morning. Don't worry about it. She was like, no, 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 don't do nothing. Don't get in trouble. Don't get in trouble. I was like, nah, yeah. I was like, I said, I said, by the time you come here tomorrow, he gonna be gone. Right. And I, I walk off. I go to my dad. I tell my dad, I was like, man, look, I need two suboxins. Like, I need. He was like, for what? I was like, man, I need them suboxins, whatever. So he give me some suboxin. The dude get high. I go over to the cell. And first, I try to. I really try to force him. And first, I try to tell him, like, bro, you gotta get out of. You gotta move out of the unit. He was like, man, for what, Joe T, man, I didn't even do nothing, man. I said, man, no. I said, bro, you, I said, bro, you gotta go. I was like, oh. I'm sorry, bro. And then at that go. point, he pleaded this case. I said, really about force of choice. I said, I yeah. tell you what, I said, I'm gonna give you a couple of suboxes. He said, man, when? I said, man, I got him on me right now. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You said that I ain't winning. It was like, when? I've been wanting to get out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, when I gotta go? <laughs> so who so, got the right type of shit? So my flags on her. <laughs> so by the time by the time uh, I get him some boxing though, he pack up, he leaves, she come in the next day, she was like, uh, I see you a man of your word. She was like, what did you do? I never told her. And I wait about a day after that. I write my number, I write the number to the phone. And it's my daddy, you know what I'm saying? He done tricked me up here and tell me he's gonna give me a phone, and we sharing a phone. He won't even give me the other phone. So when I write the number down, I go in the staff bathroom, because that's where our toilet paper at. And I tape the number under the sink. And I pull up on her, I'm like, look, check this out. I said, what if we had a way to talk outside of her? She's like, what do you mean? I said, man, you know what I mean. I said, look, check this out. I said, you ain't got to answer me. You ain't got to say yes. You ain't got to say no. I said, if you don't like what I'm about to say, I said, just let it go in one ear and out the other. We'll just leave it at that. I said, but uh, go in the bathroom. I said, there's something taped under the sink, this, this, and that. I go to the cell, tell my dad I want to keep the phone in the cell at night. And he tell me, he like, the police come in, you taking all the charge. I'm like, nah, I ain't, I ain't gonna never take no charge. You got two life sentences, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got two, like, you, man, you got two, you got two life sentences, bro. Like, you gonna take all the charge. <laughs> but, you know, what, like, what, yeah. what? So, uh, Why? Why I gotta take Yeah, well, yeah. She ended up, she ended up getting the number, though. <laughs> she come to, <laughs> she come to, she come through and do the count. She popped the door. She leaned in and did me like this. As soon as she closed the door, my daddy stood up and she said, what the hell was that? I said, what are you talking about? He said, what, what's, what's, what's she wicked and, and, and giving you the thumbs up? Cause my dad don't fool the police. He, 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 he ain't doing none of that. I said, man, we good. I said, she ain't want nothing. I waited till they left. I said, they did. I said, uh, I gave her the number. He said, you gave who the number? I said, I gave the number. He said, I'll go on, go on pack everything because they, they finna send the green team in here. I said, I'm telling you, she cool. I told her to call me block. The phone ring. He said, as soon as you answer that phone, they gonna know it's in here and they coming. I said, just chill. I answered the phone. I said, hello. She said, what are you doing, big head? I said, I don't. She, yeah, my, dad, my daddy said, ask her when she gonna break or something. Ask her when she gonna break. 
Right. 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 When she gonna bring us something, but yeah, that's that's how I end up. But after she tried to pull away from bringing me dope, like she used to bring me a QP a week. Like we had the compound on lock. I'm talking about we seven, eight thousand dollars a week. And she got the Oh, yeah, easy. I wouldn't want to go home. Yeah, she got she got uh, tired of bringing it to me, man. I wanna go home. <laughs> she got tired of bringing it to me. <laughs> she tried to pull it back, man. I had my dad again go buy me a ring, man. She wore it in. She gave it to me. We taking out the trash where I used to freak with it. We go back there one day. By the time she opened the door, I got down on her knee and everything. <laughs> she turned around in and started. Game. In the, yeah, in petition. She turned around, got to crying. She was like, really loud. Like, you gotta be quiet, you gotta be quiet. Like, you tripping. Put the ring on her finger and it. Like, real talk. What is motherfucker at now? Real talk. <laughs> Who bust out in tears when the inmate proposes? Now, nah, real talk. Now, she gonna hit me on the yeah. email. I need to come on there. I need to come on there. I got to hit you on the First of all, she gonna the talk. ring was in the trash. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> now, it was an onion ring. The ring popped. She married, though. Her husband ended up seeing my stories one day. Damn. He, she texts me. Oh, she damn. Was like, but he, he, he didn't even put it together that I was talking he about. He did now. He didn't even put it together. He still don't know. That's, I, that's smashed, so I smashed the officer in the head in penitentiary. Like, I, I wasn't even in penitentiary two years. I already had six on maximum security. Figured it you out. You can get out of there. I know you can get you some pussy. Yeah. <laughs> everything, everything going on Shit, I wouldn't have ran if I knew I could get pussy. Everything. <laughs> If he, if, 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 if he can get out of there, shit, that I don't shit. question nothing. Yeah. If he told me he had a fucking So they say it happened in every prison, man. Huh? It's happening in prison. That's what they Everywhere. say. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah, anytime. And it's easy. And they say a lot of times the, the women that come in there ain't really got too much life experience as far as being with motherfuckers who got some goddamn... It ain't true, bro. Street smart. It ain't true. That's it not ain't true. true. Nah, it ain't. It so ain't. they be right in there with, right Man, with the shit. Listen, nah, because, nah, yeah, they be knowing. They, they just intrigued. It's just like with the story. Like, I make a living telling, like, people just intrigued with hearing. So by the time a woman come in there, you know what I'm saying, of course, and then they, we got cologne in here. They showing butcher knives. Like, <laughs> like, 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 it's crazy. Like, they come in and be like, man, I, and by the time somebody pulls six, seven thousand dollars green money out, like, in the penitentiary, like, until you hear it, just take two, three hundred, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Bring yeah. me some McDonald's tomorrow. Right. Eventually, you're going to be like, my nigga ain't even at home, ain't even got that. Like, right. And I've seen it several yeah. times. Like, and before, they probably spend more time there than they do literally, at home. Literally, literally. Yeah. Like, they, I've, I've seen dudes with hundred thousand dollars on their books, like, Paying women rent, like at yeah. some point you gonna bust down. Why wouldn't you? And then you tell you tell a girl, look, check this out. Go buy a phone from Walmart for fifty dollars. I'm gonna sell it for fifteen hundred in here. Bring me ten of them. Motherfucker running off a hundred thousand in the train gang. In I know. Se gang. I know several. Yeah. I know several. My dad had that kind of money. Like my dad had created apps. I'm talking about books and. Like, all kind of, like, apps. my daddy, like, yeah, he had a phone app. He just couldn't keep it going, cause, cause, but, yeah. Like, he was spending, like, bread. Like, he had an what? app developer, like. In the jail. In the penitentiary. While I was in the cell. The nigga made the app in jail. Man had an app developer he found on Fiverr. Like, I'm sitting there and watching him develop it. That nigga laughing. Like, I ain't playing. Like, Pop's a beast. Like, he, he got a YouTube, too. <laughs> but So he's still serving? Yeah, my pop got two licenses. He probably, I don't know what pops got left, man, but that's my guy, man. Love him yeah, to death. He said, a lot left. He got a lot, yeah, he got a lot, he got a lot left. He got a lot left. But yeah. Left that penitentiary with him. Do you see the story about my uncle, too? Uh-uh. Left the penitentiary with my dad and ended up going with my uncle. He got 75. He's still in there. Damn. Yeah. Whole family was in there. So everybody in your city know your folks. Yeah. For sure. It's a small town, though. Everybody know everybody. Yeah, but they for damn sure know you. They for damn sure. Yeah, they know. They know. <laughs> they know. Every story, they know for sure. What made you just start doing the social media and just turn your whole story around, though? Like, Man, that's, my, that's what really changed everything, right? Just get it in did. front of the social it did. media. My last two years, man, like, with my uncle, you know, my uncle, you know, he believed in the most happy man, and I had started reading that word and started studying. That was really like a... It's a scripture I'll never forget. It say, when a man waves, please the most high, he'll make even his enemies at peace with him. And at that point, you know, I'm getting ready to go home. I'm thinking I'm finna go home and, and have enemies. 
You know, so that was the first scripture. I was like, man, I need this to be real for me. You know what I'm saying? Because if not, even if weather change or not, I'm going to either be in the grass or back in here having, you know what I'm saying? Because as much as I done did. But um, by the time I um, get ready to walk out of there, I was I was like, man, this, this is what I'm doing. And uh, social media was a thing. I was already messing with it on the phone. And uh, but I was doing straight. I was doing straight ministry, bro. Like I was traveling. I was group homes and going to churches. And and I hate to say it, like it was that, that that wasn't making no money. Like people feel like when you go to the penitentiary and come home, like you owe a debt to society to to help people and change people. And but they don't feel like they should. Put no money in your pocket to do it. Let me get straight yeah. first. Yeah, let you me. You had to live there. You had to earn. Like, I come home to nothing. Yeah. Like, I come I got to build this shit. Like, I, like, I, I come home to nothing. Like, I, I wore the same two pair of shoes and 10 outfits for 365 days. Like, I, I didn't have nothing. Like, yeah. literally. Didn't nobody give me nothing when I stepped. But that's how it started. Like, I was on social media then, but I, I hadn't learned it. I was behind. I ain't know how it worked. I ain't know how to promote. I ain't know how to really make no money off of social media. But by the time I really started seeing like the views and paying attention and then seeing people were making a living off of it, I was like, man, hold on, let me try to figure this out. And then when TikTok happened, like I started doing the numbers, like you can promote on TikTok. Like I'm I'm posting a video going, making, it's getting 250,000 views or half a million views. But then I ended up, I'm selling a couple of hundred books off of that. My books at the time, $25. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, if I sell a hundred books off of this one post, and I put an extra hundred behind it, and I sell another hundred. I guess how I started doing the numbers. I'm like, I might well go and put some money behind what I'm doing, and it's and it started working, bro. And then uh, I didn't know YouTube was paying the most, so I stopped trying to sell the book and say instead of get the book, come over to YouTube. My YouTube started going crazy. And once that started going crazy, once I seen them chicks, I said, we're going to stay on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're going to stay on YouTube. And man, I'm still, I ain't even going to lie, man. I've been home, it be seven years in May. Like, I feel like I'm. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> hell, after hearing all them charges, I was like, shit, hell. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't sound like you know, 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 George, I wanted to ask him, did, did you escape then? <laughs> yeah, right. Are you supposed to be yeah, right. shit? Nah, 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 nah. nah. nah it's, you it's, think you got out on Tim Kelly? Yeah, because of the cause of the lawyer. Oh, yeah, yeah. When they got right. when they when they got me down there, bro, I sit down in the police department for three and a half hours. But see, this where I live, where I lived at the time, where my mama lived, where the police department is, it's like a seven and a half minute drive. From the police department to our jail, it's like a two and a half minute job. So it literally should have, because they already had an affidavit to come and arrest me. So I should have went straight to jail. I shouldn't even went to the police department. And I had already retained a lawyer, which means they knew on record before they even came and got me that I had a lawyer. So it didn't want no sense in coming to question me. So when they take me down, I'm telling them all these lies, telling them all these lies, telling them all these lies. They ain't hearing me. And I'm, and I'm telling them I got a lawyer. They know who my lawyer is. They literally was like, we want to talk to him. I'm like, yeah. They call my lawyer, Bo Taylor, on the phone. He get on the phone. He said, yeah, Joe, they had already let me know they, they came and arrested you or whatever. He's like, man, you can go ahead and talk to him. I'll be down there in a minute. It's literally what my lawyer told me. He already know he done. He knew what was going on. Yeah. They... I gave them for like 10 statements. They wouldn't take them. The first time I said I had a gun and incriminated myself, they, oh, yeah, that's it right there. They go ahead. And I signed it. But I ended up, the first three lawyers I had, I fired them because I'm telling them, ain't no audio, ain't no video. I can show on record I had a retained lawyer. I said, if you get the phone records, they going to show that the lawyer was called. What well, at that point, the interview's supposed to stop. So whatever right. they trying to say, they, that, ain't, that ain't nothing. Right. And they wouldn't believe me. So I ended up getting a pro bono lawyer named Jody Bell, man. Listen, if it wasn't for her, like, soon as she came and I told her, she said, I don't even worry about it. She was like, I know Bo personally. And I told her, I said, man, call my mama. Tell my mama to get the, uh, tell her to say uh, that she got the receipt. She called a lawyer. He tell her what he did. We ended up, she ended up getting uh, the phone records, and she took it to the DA, and she was like, she told me, though, before she did all this, she said, I can beat your whole case. She said, somebody lost their life, Joe. She said, this man had a child on the way. And she running all this. I and at that time, really, I, I, like, I want to go home. Like, I don't care. They, they messed up. Like, I want to go home. When she running it down to me, I hear what she's saying, though. And then uh, she done it. And we went to court, and they, they, the first deal was like 21, 22. They came down to like 15. I said, nah, they ain't got nothing. Tell them I'll take an eight. I already had two years and some change on it. I'm, I'm going to be right back out. 
She was like, he said he won't give you an eight. I think he said he'd give you a 12. And she said, I'm gonna tell him to split the difference and give you 10 for the for the, uh, the murder, kidnap, and robbery. And then I tell him, then put the one on there for the escape. And I sit there and I asked her, I said, uh, I said, who in the courtroom is in my family out there? She was like, nah, Joe, ain't nobody out there. And I was like, man, go get the paperwork. And I signed it. I signed it. And that was it. My trial part, we both got the same amount of time. And that's, that's really how I'm free. If it wasn't for that, we would talk. shit. Yeah. That's how, that's how it happened. <laughs> that shit crazy, bro. Yeah, real talk. It's a blessing to be right here, bro. So the shit sound... Hey, yeah, with them charges. The yeah. shit sound like a movie. You got any plans, movie, TV? How would you see your story? I got a series I'm shooting right now called Traps. Yeah, it's on, it's on Patreon. That's okay. where we moving the trap okay. to right now. We, we finna do episode four when I get back. Come on. Uh, we gonna be the hottest thing. We gonna be bigger than power. Come on. There ain't no if and buts and about this, it. This straight your stories? Are you mixing your stories I'm, with some nah, I'm, random I'm, shit? Nah, I'm just starting. I'm making it up. It, it ain't even no script. Like, my team, like, shout out to my team. Like, yeah. it ain't even no script. Like, I'm making it up on the spot. Okay. Like, I just tell them, pull up, look, this is what we're doing. This boom, 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 boom. Yeah. yeah. Just stay in the context of this. We're going right. to be on episode four. I'm going right. to go six episodes and then go to two. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, real talk. Man, we can literally sit here and talk this shit all night, man. Nah, nah, real talk, man. And that's that's just, a hell of a story. That's just a piece of it. Like, man, I'm telling you. I, that's just yeah. a piece of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> sitting there, man, man, piece. Piece. So you know people go tune in, and you can direct them to the of. book, man. Yeah, my, shit. yeah, for sure. My website, man, is uh, JTB3. And that's just one of the books, right? Yeah, I got five. OK. Yeah, I got five. I got three of them before this, and then uh, I got one after this, which is the journey since I've been home, you know, me and Justin. Uh, stuff I went through, you know what I'm saying, how I felt. You been talking to the kids and shit, man? I was, man. I ain't did it in a while, man. I'm just telling them, like, I want to I wanna get back to it, man. I want to I wanna get back to, to speaking. Because at the, at the time, I hate to say it, the numbers is your resume. Yeah. The platform matter. Like, everybody a number, homie. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. starting then, you know, it's, oh, he, he did time, and this is it. Now, <clears throat> oh, he got 200,000 on YouTube, he got 100,000, he got almost a million on TikTok, tell him we'll pay him. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's different when the numbers is like, you know, everybody, they feel like it'll, you know what I'm saying? So, and they, they ain't even about the money at this point. Like, I'm I'm blessed. I'm yeah, <laughs> right. Beyond measures. Right, like, yeah, me and right. my daughter, through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see my daughter the whole 10 years home, man, her like this. That's dope. Yeah. Man, it's just dope to see a brother be able to bounce back, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. From and recover right. and, and yeah. take right. it to another level. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? Come on, man. Yeah. That's dope, man. It's a grind every day. It's a grind every day. Well, shit, man, this your first time stopping through here. Don't yeah. let it be the last, man. Got to, man, bro. listen, bro. It's an honor. When you hit me and say it, man, I, I need you. I was like, man, I ain't, even, I ain't post nothing. I ain't said nothing. I ain't believe it, though. Shit. I done had two minutes. I done had a lot of people. Like, hit me up. Like, I, oh, they hit you on the I done, a, I done hit a lot of them, man. So, you the case, to, so since you done took off, you seen some of that Hollywood shit? It was yeah, I done okay. seen a lot of people not keep their word. Like, hit me up. Like, I'm going to do A, B, and C for you, X, Y, and Z. Um, yeah. Then the last person I talked to was Ken Whitley. Uh, she had bought the book, read the book, hit me up. And she told me, she said, uh, you got a hell of a story. She said, well, everybody going to be scared to touch it. She was like, it's gonna be hard for you to sit on people's couch because they ain't gonna know how to spend that to make the people accept, you know what I'm saying, that you home. Well, you don't live for Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah, that's, <laughs> a, it's, it's, that's why, I, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I appreciate you, homie. Man, but if motherfuckers listen to your story, you can kind of see where it came from, bro. Yeah. You said your pops introduced your brother to the plug, put you to the plug, put you on the whole game, thing. put you on, like. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I want, I like to, I want to tell it raw. Like when I go, like I don't want to sugarcoat. I want to, you know, I want to tell it raw, man. And, uh, you don't see that. You don't see that. You don't see too many. Like you don't, you don't see that low. Yeah. Yeah. You don't see that. <laughs> you don't see that. Look, man, we got you some '85 South gear, Come on, man. I appreciate you, man. I stop through here. It's too real, man. Yeah, hey, man, you got to you you got you a real ghetto legend, so you got to sign the table. I got to sign the table. All the ghetto legends, get that side over there. Get that side over there. It's on that side on on uh, right side right here. Yeah, right here. sit right there. Let's see what we got going on, man.
Yeah, man. 85 South Show, Joe T. We out of here.